Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. This is, the, this is the word right here. Oh, that duck is getting smaller. On the, okay, duck, duck out of here. <laughs> George, who's first? Groucho, we have Glory Dawson and Ennio Bolognini on deck now, so folks, you may please and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bachelor life. Say the secret word and divide an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks I'm whistling at him, right? <laughs> Glory, uh, hallelujah. Dawson, and uh, is that your middle name, Hallelujah? No, but it might just as well be. Uh, and Ennio Bologna. Bolognini. Bolognini. No matter how thin you slice it, it's still bologna to me. <laughs> Maybe I have to like to have more spaghetti. Yeah. Would you like to Maybe. marry a woman around 63 who makes wonderful pizza? <laughs> no. No. No, no, no. What about Glory? Ah. <laughs> now I changed my mind. Uh, what sort of work do you do, uh, Ennio? Well, I'm trying to play the cello all the time because that's my, that's my way to make a living. Huh? Professional, yes. A musician, huh? Yes. <laughs> you like our orchestra, you're not sure of it, are you? Oh, yes. <laughs> you haven't got bow legs. Aren't you supposed to have bow legs if you're a cello player? Uh, not exactly. No? Sometimes I play sideways. <laughs> it's like a woman riding a horse in England. Huh? Did you ever think of playing the violin instead of the cello? Well... Look at the money Jack Benny's made from the fiddle. I know. Have you thought of a violin? Well, one day I put the hand in the violin and found out that I was covering too much territory. So uh, I took the... See the size of my hands, mm. as I can tell you. Well, you shouldn't. You should be milking cows with those. Oh, eggs. I do that too. I'm... You're Glory Dawson, huh? Thanks. Where are you from, Glory? San Antonio, Texas. Glory, Glory, <laughs> Glory Dawson. Are you married? No. Well, this is obviously your own choice. Aren't there any young single men around that uh, oh, you could become enamored of? Most of them are already married. <laughs> You mean the good ones are married? <laughs> well, most of the good ones are already married. That's not necessarily true, Gloria. Married ones aren't any better than single ones. <laughs> They're just too weak to struggle with. <laughs> well, why do you object to the men you come in contact with every day? How do you know one of them isn't the uh, Mr. Right for you? Well, the men I come in contact with every day are usually the kind I wouldn't want to marry. They're either con men or larceny, burglars or something. I said... You must go around with a pretty classy crowd. <laughs> Just where do you work, Glory? In the public library? I'm a Los Angeles policewoman. A cop? Well, goodbye, Glory Dawson. <laughs> <laughs> you need me, aren't you? Oh, I'll pinch you. Well, you don't need me. You can catch your own husband. <laughs> pinch him first, and if you like him, throw him in the can. <laughs> Are you really a lady cop? Um, <clears throat> well, I like being called a lady, but a cop uh, would rather be called a policewoman or a oh, police officer. Well, I, 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 cop isn't dignified. That's right. I think flatfoot is more appropriate. <laughs> I'm sure every man you meet isn't a crook, Glory. How about the fellows you have dates with? What's the matter with them? Oh, they're not all crooks, but what if they take you out to dinner and then they spend the rest of the night trying to squeeze it out of you? <laughs> Well, if they do that, do they get a rebate on the dinner? <laughs> Don't you like to be squeezed? Not particularly. Not at all? Well, I don't think... I think I'll stand on the Fifth Amendment right here. <laughs> Don't you? Why do you look so good if you don't want to be squeezed? What do you get all dressed up for? Wear high heels and nylons and a very tight dress if you don't want to be squeezed. Well... <laughs> I give up. You're lying, aren't you, Gloria? <laughs> Imagine saying that to a cop when he's handing you a ticket. 
<laughs> well, uh, you're a charming couple, and if you don't get married, are you, are you married, any of you? No, sir. No, well, that's okay. Well, the time has come to play your bets your life. Now let's play your bet your life. You selected largest cities of states. The population figures for these cities are all based on the latest census reports. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. What is the largest city in the state of... Uh, Beat it, Phantom, this is a cop. <laughs> What's the largest city in the state of Louisiana? Yeah, I, I know this. Okay. What do you eat all those beautiful French beans? Well, cut out the menu. Oh, Give us the name of the city. What is the name of the city? New Orleans. No. New Orleans. You have one right. Three more right, and you'll have $1,000. All right. What is the largest city in the state of Minnesota? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. You're two right now, two more right, and you'll have $1,000. What is the largest city in Ohio? Cleveland. Cleveland is right. <laughs> One more right, and you'll have $1,000. You're almost there. Fenneman, would you like to get arrested by Gloria? Uh -huh. Wouldn't yeah. be too bad, would it? Uh... <laughs> I'd certainly like to get arrested by you. It what is the large? Be arranged. Huh? It could probably be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> What's the largest city in Montana? Billings. Billings. It happens you. to be Great Falls. Oh. Well, you now have one wrong. Well, neither of you. Know. <clears throat> well, so, here we go again. Don't get the next one wrong. What is All the right. largest city in Rhode Island? Providence. Providence, that's right. It's bigger than the state. <laughs> Part of it juts over into Connecticut. You have one right again. We're starting all over? Yeah. That's all you have, We have one right. Now, what is the largest city in Tennessee? Nashville. Knoxville. No, you're Nashville. both wrong. It's Memphis. Oh. Well, you're back to one wrong. What is the largest city in Virginia? No. Richmond is right. Richmond is right. Oh, well, you're back to one right. Now, what is the largest city in the state of Missouri? Oh, Missouri. Kansas City. Kansas City. Kansas City? No, St. Louis. Oh. Well, you're back to one wrong again. What is the largest city in Texas? Houston. That's right. Oh. And you're back to one now, right. How did you know that? <laughs> what is the largest city in Vermont? As soon as you get away from Texas, you look. Is that Maplewood? No. Go back to one wrong again. Burlington. Yes, you are back to one wrong again. What is the largest city? What is the largest city in South Dakota? Sioux City. Sioux Falls. What is Sioux it? Sioux Falls. Sioux Falls is right. Back to one right. What is the lot? <laughs> you know, we're going to run out of cities pretty soon. <laughs> I'm, I may have to switch to Belgium or... Uh... You're just about out of states. Too. All right. What is the largest city in North Dakota? Didn't we just have that? No, we had South Dakota. Oh. Oh. What's the answer? Is Fargo. Never heard of it. All right. What is the largest city in New Hampshire? Um, it's New Jersey. <laughs> Manchester. Never heard of it. <laughs> well, well, you missed two in a row, 18 times, so you're on. <laughs> you're all through. We don't want you to go away broke. I'm going to ask you one question for $100. You ready? No help in the audience. From what animal do you get a bear skin? <laughs> a bear skin? Yeah. <laughs> From what animal? A bear. <laughs> See, I had it wrong. I was going to say Gypsy Rose Lee. <laughs> Well, sorry you didn't win more, but thanks anyway for being on our show. You bet your life. And I hope you too. Well, Groucho, we have some brothers who want to meet you now, so we'll fill and... Any of mine? 
No, no. This is Phil and Frank Interlandy. I'd not mind. No. Would you come in, fellas, and meet Groucho Marx, please? Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Triplets, if I ever saw triplets. <laughs> Phil and Frank Interlandy, eh? Well, obviously, you, you're identical twins. Now, which one is Phil and which one is Frank? Well, I'm, I'm Phil, Phil and, and he's... He's Phil and I'm Frank. Oh. Now, Frank, where were you born? I was born on the uh, west side of Chicago. Right? Really? So, Around Logan Square? And is... uh, where do you live now? In Laguna Beach. Laguna? Mm-hmm. Huh? That's a very pretty place. How long have you boys been twins? <laughs> About 33 years. <laughs> Phil? Phil, who's the oldest? You're I Phil, am. huh? Yes. Okay. I am. 20 how much, minutes. How much older are you than uh, Frank? 20 minutes. I thought so. And believe me, you look it, too. Huh? <laughs> You look about 30 minutes older. Now, uh, has that 20 minutes made much difference in your life? Uh, well, it did in the beginning. I remember when my mother had to buy uh, clothing for us, and she couldn't get something identical. Well, he would always get first choice, and then I'd get what was left, you see. Well, Nate, you say you play some odd tricks. <laughs> Just imagine the money you save being twins. When you put a penny in the weighing machine, all you have to do is stand on the scales together and then divide by two. <laughs> Are you both married? Yes. Well, that's where the differences begin, eh? <laughs> yes. Phil, how did you meet your wife? Well, I met her at a, at a reading for a play in uh, the local playhouse at Laguna. She was reading for a play, and I saw her go up on stage, and she looked wonderful, but she, yeah, she just didn't read well. So I thought if I could take her out, I could sort of help her with her acting. Mm -hmm. Well, how did it work out? Did you improve her acting? Yes, quite a bit. I think she's, uh, I think she's a pretty good actor, actress now. What is she playing in now? Well, she's not playing anything now. She's uh, just a housewife. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly straightened her out. <laughs> Imagine what would have happened if you hadn't coached her. <laughs> She'd probably still be in show business. <laughs> How did you meet your beloved, and what was wrong with her at the time? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with her. Uh, I met her at the University of Iowa, and... Was she on the team? On the football team? <laughs> no. No, uh... She was just a student. A corn husker? Classes. Yes, she's so What a were you doing husker. in Iowa if you were born on the west side of Chicago? Well, I went to the University of Iowa because they... Why? Had, uh, wasn't the University of Chicago good enough for you? Well, not for the art department. It wasn't good enough. There you... wasn't any art department No, there? I wanted a major Didn't in Sidney art. Smith come from there? He used to write the gumps? Yeah, but that's not art. That's cartooning. <laughs> oh. That's a very snobbish attitude. <laughs> no, it is. <laughs> well, what happened? Where did you meet her? I met her in uh, an Italian speaking class. Now, yeah. what were you doing in there? Well, I wanted to take Italian because I love the language. I think it's a I wonderful see. language. And you were taking Italian art, is that it? Well, I was studying a lot of Italian art, yes, Italian and it art? did help. I see. Mm -hmm. well, why did it help? What kind of a job do you have? Now? Yeah. I'm a cartoonist. <laughs> Italian singing lessons to become a cartoonist? <laughs> Where do your cartoons appear? In Italy, mostly? <laughs> no, no. Phil, uh, what kind of a job do you have? I'm a cartoonist. Oh. <laughs> and you never took the uh, class he took, eh? No, nope, never. At all, eh? Not at you all. see, it wasn't necessary at all. Apparently uh, not. You could have done without that. Eh? Where do your cartoons appear? Uh, most of the national magazines. Saturday Evening Post, True, uh, Better Homes and Gardens, Playboy. Sports Illustrated. Mm -hmm. What are your cartoons about? Could you describe one of them for us? Well, I, uh, I did one of... Uh, Look how he's watching you. Huh? Oh, this, is, this is great. It's hard are you to describe. Watching him? Are you watching him with admiration or contempt? Both. Both. <laughs> As a cartoonist, contempt. <laughs> As a brother, admiration. I see. <laughs> well, you know how you stand. <laughs> Now, how do you feel about him? <laughs> I'd rather not say right now. How do you feel about this cartoon? At least what he thinks about you, he could say publicly. <laughs> what you think about him, you have to say privately. <laughs> well, go ahead. Tell us about it. Describe one of these cartoons. Well, I had a couple driving up to a summer cottage. A couple of cartoons? No, a couple of people. No. And they're driving up to the summer cottage. Was and this an elderly couple? Middle-aged. Oh. How old? What do you regard as middle-aged? <laughs> Forty. <laughs> we better go on with this, huh? <laughs> so? Well, they're driving up to the summer cottage, and the, the man looks back, and he sees another car coming down the road toward the summer cottage, and he says, Good grief, not already. 
And you got paid for that? <laughs> Did you ever sell any cartoons to Collier's Magazine or The Woman's Home Companion? Yes, quite a few. You know, they're out of business now, both of them. <laughs> Glad he always had to wear your old clothes. <laughs> Bet you are too, huh? Now, Phil, does your wife like your cartoons? Yes, very much. Uh -huh. Where is this unfortunate uh, lady? Is she around here? Though? Yes, she's somewhere out in the audience. She's in the audience? Mrs. Uh, Interlandi? Interlandi. Interlandi. Uh, would you mind standing up? Would you give us some lights out there? <laughs> Mrs. Interlandi. <laughs> well, she's a very attractive girl, huh? I ask you a question. Uh, do you understand your husband's cartoons, the one about a strange couple coming up to the house? I think I do. <laughs> you, you're not sure, huh? Not positive. Would you mind tripping down here for a minute? I'd like to discuss this with you more. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> now, Frank, if you would just sit down uh, over here for Obviously, a second. Yeah. Huh? This happens all the time. Oh, it does, huh? <laughs> Mrs. Interlandi, first I want you to kiss your husband. Right? <laughs> and then I want you to tell me, uh, what is your first name? Phoebe. Phoebe, well that's a very cute name. Thank you. I didn't dig that cartoon about the couple in the summer cottage. <coughs> Perhaps if you told me about another of his cartoons, I could understand it better. What is your favorite? Oh, I have quite a few. Um, I don't know, the one that comes to mind at the moment is a um, cartoon about... Um, well, there, it's a captionless cartoon. There's nothing written underneath. And Phil hates me to describe his cartoons. Um, th there's these hunters coming over the, a hill with a hound dog, and they're all dressed in hunting habits, and they have their guns and everything. And there's a woman looking at the hunters through a big plate glass window, sitting in a robe in her uh, living room chair. And then sitting behind her chair is a little red fox hiding. <laughs> Thank you, now, would you mind explaining that to me? <laughs> it's very funny when you see it. No, I, I like it even <laughs> if I don't understand it, I like it. Now, this is the same chap who criticized your acting, huh? Yeah. And, and stopped your uh, theatrical career in midair, as... So to speak. So to speak, yes. Well, Phoebe, thanks for the information. Now, if you'll grab a chair right over there, you can watch your husband, Phil, make a jackass of himself in the quiz. <laughs> now, what kind of work do you do, Bob, uh, Frank? I'm a cartoonist, too. You, too, huh? Yes. You boys will go to any lengths to be twins, won't you? <laughs> do you work together? No, I, I'm uh, uh, contracted with the Des Moines Register and Tribune. Oh, you do the kind of high block stuff, huh? Yeah. The serious it, stuff, and Fitzpatrick it's, it's and all that. It's social political satire. I see. And they're syndicated? Yes, syndicated. And your name is Interlandi. I've seen your cartoons, and I think they're very good. Thank you. It's a very difficult medium uh, to write satire in cartoons. There's very few good ones. Fitzpatrick and High Block and you and uh, Lichty. Oh, that's a great company you're Yes, yes, with. I put you in high-class company. I don't thank me, you thank my neighbor. He buys the paper your cartoons are in. <laughs> don't go out there. Don't get the wrong idea. I don't go out there every morning and steal his paper. It just happens to be near where, the, where I'm stealing his milk. <laughs> Could you give us an idea of one of your social satires? Describe a typical cartoon. Well, uh, I did one um, of a middle class couple in a kitchen. A man is sitting at a table, the kitchen table with his shirt off and he needed a shave. And the woman is sitting there in an apron, and they're drinking a beer or a coffee or something. And, and all around them were cameras and lights and television people, you know. And the man at the table is saying, well, you tell Edward R. Murrow this is the wrong house. Well, it's very good, but uh, who is Edward R. Murrow? <laughs> Attention, Ed Morrow. Remember what happened to Collier's. 
<laughs> well, you're bright young fellas, and it's been fun talking to you. And uh, However, it's time to see how well you work together when the chips are done, so let's play You Bet Your Life. While you select the professions of famous people, I'll ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. You ready? What was Edwin Booth's profession? <laughs> Actor. You have one right. What was Jim Corbett's profession? Boxer. Boxer. You boys ought to be ashamed to take the money, if you get any. <laughs> well, you're halfway to it now. You have two right, two more right, and you'll have $1,000. All right. What was Jane Addams' profession? Social worker. Social worker is right. Social worker. Get the next one right, and the thousand is yours. What was Henry Ward Beach's profession? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. You said, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, minister. Clergyman, famous clergyman. Well, that was quick. You got four in a row. You win $1,000. As a rule, we don't get clipped so swiftly. <laughs> but I, I, I surmise that this was going to happen. Now, you won $1,000. Now, you can keep it and quit, or you can come back late and try to... <laughs> All right, George, let's find out how we stand on the big question. All right, uh, Phil and Frank uh, Interlandy, would you come back, please? I guess these are... You won $1,000 so far. Now, if you decide to try for the 10000 and you fail, you wind up with a total of 500 Now, what are you going to do? We'll try. You we'll gonna try? Now pick a number from one to ten and then spin the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, the question is why two thousand. If your number comes up, this question is why ten thousand. What number do you want? Nine. Nine. Give it a throw. Your number was nine, it landed on five, so this question is worth $2,000. In 1829, a German publisher compiled a guidebook that since has become the most famous of its kind in the world. For $2,000, what is the name of this well-known series of guidebooks for travelers? What's the answer? Uh, Baedeker. Baedeker is right. You won $2,000. What are you going to do with all that money? I think I'll uh, <laughs> go to New York. You going to take him with you? No, no. I've I just bought a piano for my wife. I'm going to help pay for it. Oh. Are you going to have to listen to it? She's very good. Oh, I she is. Enjoy yeah. it. Well, congratulations and thanks for being with us. You bet your life. Thank you, Justice.